There's a praise in this house. Everybody dance before him. There's a praise in this house. I can feel him now. There's a praise in this house. Everybody dance before him. There's a praise in this house. I can feel him. There's a praise. Everybody dance before him. There's a praise in this house. I can feel him. And he is high and lifted up. His train fills and he reigns upon the throne. He's God and God alone. Yes, he is high and lifted up. His train fills the temple and he reigns. He's God and God alone. There's the worship in this house. Everybody bow before him. There's a worship in this house. I can feel him. There's a worship. Everybody bow before him. There's a worship in this house. I can feel him. And he is high and lifted up. His train fills the temple. Worship in this house. Everybody bow before him. There's a worship in this house. I can feel him. There's a worship. Everybody bow before him. There's a worship in this house. I can feel him now. And he is high and lifted up. His chain fills the temple and he reigns. He reigns upon the throne. He's God. Oh, yes, he is high and lifted up. His train fills the temple and he reigns upon the throne. He's God and God alone. I've come to praise him. Oh, lift those hands. to praise him. Lift those hands. I've come to praise him. For God, God is here. I've come to praise him. Lift those hands. I've come to praise him. Oh, God is here. He's Jehovah. Jehovah. Jehovah, 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 
is he? Oh God, yes, he is with me. He's Jehovah, Jireh, he is my provider. To praise him. Oh, God is here. Oh, I've come to praise him. Lift those hands. Oh, praise him. Yes, God is here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we do that for just a few moments all across this sanctuary? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The psalmist David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Doesn't matter what I'm facing this upcoming week. Doesn't matter what I just went through. But I'm going to take some time tonight and I'm going to praise him. I'm going to take some time tonight and I'm just going to pour out a blessing on him that nobody else around me may understand because they didn't have the week that I had. But I'm here tonight and I know that it's by his grace and I came tonight to praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you feel that way in your spirit tonight? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I got joy in my soul, God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all his well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back, cause this means war. Oh, this means, this means this means war. This means war. I've been in the storm and rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever's going on, I've got my woes on. I might be in a daze, but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means, this means war. Oh, this means, this means war. This means, this means war. Oh, I've come to plead. I plead, I plead the blood. Oh, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I've come to plead. The blood. I plead, I plead the blood. Oh, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. Oh, I've been in the storm and rain. But the blood still stays the same. Whatever going on, I've got my war clothes on. I might be in a daze, but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. Oh, this means war. Hallelujah. This means war. Oh, this means. Hallelujah. Oh, I plead. I plead. I plead the blood. Oh, I plead the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. You can't have my family. You can't have my family. You can't have 
You can't, you can't, you can't. I plead, I plead, I plead. The hey, I plead the blood. I began to think of Shama while we were singing this song. The enemy had came in and was wanting to take up just a field of lentils. But he had to draw a line somewhere. It's not just, it's not good if the enemy attacks you. But when somebody messes with your family, when somebody begins to mess with your stuff, I've seen, I've got two boys, and I've seen them go at each other, aggravated, wanting to fight each other, wanting to just tear each other apart. But when somebody else messes with one of them, you ought to hear them talk, you ought to see them bristle up like, hey, that's my brother. You don't want to mess with my brother. Now begin to see as Shema began to stand at the edge of a bean patch. And he said, you know what? It's not about this little bean patch right here. It's not about just this field of lentils. But if, if the enemy increases here and I keep backing up, eventually it's going to affect my family. Because they're going to be in my house. I wonder if there's anybody in here with a Shema spirit tonight that's willing to say, you know what? I've been attacked long enough. I've been feeling it long enough. I've backed up just enough. This is it. This is it. I'm not moving past this bean field because if you take my bean field, you're gonna take my barn. If you take my barn, you're gonna take my house. That's where my family's at. Don't mess with my stuff. I wonder if there's somebody in here that won't just say, you know what? I'm drawing a line right here. Nothing's coming past this line because greater is he. Greater is he. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Shoramataya Rabataya. Oh, you can't have my family. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have you can't have my, you can't have my, you can't, you can't, you can't, cause I plead. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. Oh, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. Yes, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. Yes, I plead the blood. The blood. I plead, I plead the blood. Yes, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. <laughs> I've been in the storm and rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever's going on, I've got my war clothes on. I might be in a daze, but he can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Cause this means war. I've came too far to let the enemy this bring me down. War. Hey, this means war. This means war. Hey, this, this means, means war. Oh, I've come to plead. I plead, I plead. Hey, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I got joy in my soul, cause God is in control. 
I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all his will. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. Cause no matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means This means war. This means war. This means war. This means This means war. Hallelujah. Yes, I plead. I plead. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. in the storm and rain the blood still stays the same whatever's going on I've got my war clothes on I might be in a daze but you can't have my praise no matter the attack I won't turn back this means war this means war this means war this means this means, this means war. Oh, I bleed the blood. I bleed, I bleed the blood. I bleed the blood. I bleed, I bleed the blood. Yes, I bleed the blood. I bleed, I bleed the blood. I bleed the blood. I bleed, I bleed the blood. Hey, you can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my breakthrough. Oh, you can't have my, you can't have my, you can't, you can't, you can't. I plead, I plead, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Yes, I plead the blood. Yes! Hallelujah, hallelujah! I'm not backing up, I'm not backing down, I'm not turning around, no matter the attack! Hallelujah! Yes! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah! Oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap of praise all across this sanctuary. Praise God. I wonder if we can't take about two or three minutes right here and just go into a place of warfare in the spirit. I wish we would make applicable what we've been taught right now in the name of Jesus and begin to plead the blood over situations and begin to bind things and begin to loose things right now in Jesus' name. Come on, abundant life. I plead the blood of Jesus. Lord, we bind any distraction in this house. Let there be a spirit of unity. Let there be a spirit, God, that would drive back the discord. Shove back the things that's trying to bind us. Let there be a release in the atmosphere right now of everything that's holy in God. Let there be an anointing that would destroy yokes come in this building. I pray against the spirit, God, that would try to bring a place, oh God, of lethargy in this house. Let that apathetic attitude be bound in Jesus' name. Come on, 
Come on, we're not there yet. Come on, we're not there yet. Let there be a tongue come out of your mouth. Let there be a Holy Ghost anointing flow from your lips. Right now, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead it over our families. We plead it over our finances. We plead it over our marriages. We tell them. Now let's try again what he tried to leave off with. I wish you would clap your hands and shout with a triumphant voice in this place. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Anything is possible today. Because Jesus is here. Anything is possible. You need a miracle tonight, you can receive a miracle right now. You don't even have to wait till the end of service. Miracles are in this building. You need a touch from God, you can receive a touch from God right now. If it's been a while since you've spoken a heavenly language, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost afresh and new right now. If you've never spoken a heavenly language, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the first time right now. There's something about it when you start pleading the blood. Now, this is old-fashioned. This is old school here. But, but when you start pleading the blood over things, you know, it's amazing. We've been pleading the blood for years, and now everybody's starting to plead the blood. It's becoming popular Amen, everybody's pleading the blood. But Pentecost is supposed to know what that really means. Because uh, uh, repentance and remission has to be preached in his name. There is not salvation in any other name. There's something about it. Listen here right now, because there was a lot of Jesuses in that day. Yeshua, Yahushua, however you want to say his name. There was a lot in that day. It'd be like saying in this place tonight, I wish Michael would stand up. There's probably more than one Michael. It'd be like saying in this place right now, I wish Tom would just stand up. There might be more than one Tom. I wish Ben would stand up. There might be more than one Ben. Amen. Jesus was, not, it, a matter of fact, most people say that the name of Barabbas was Jesus Barabbas. But there's something about it when you combine the blood and the name. You see, blood is identifiable. It identifies you down to the last DNA particle. There's something about the blood that when you understand the power of the blood combined with the power of the name, and that can get applied to your life. I wish I had some apostolics in this house. And that can get applied to your life. And you can allow that to change your life. Hear me, drugs will leave your body in the name of Jesus. You don't have to get on a 12-step program. You can get on a one-step program of the Alcohol can be a thing of the past. Is there any witnesses in the house? Alcohol can be a thing of the past. If you can just get on a one-step program of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, somebody help me right now. There's some power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. You don't understand, preacher. No, you don't understand. Most people, when they come to church, they think they're just full around them of, of just perfect people that's been raised in Pentecost or raised in church. But that's not always the case. Matter of fact, it's never the case. If you ever go to a church and it's full of perfect people, pinch yourself, you're probably dead and you've made it to heaven. But I have people in this, in this building that are saved by the blood of the Lamb. And not everybody has the same testimony, but everybody had to come through the same door. We have alcoholics that used to be alcoholics in this room that God's delivered. We have people that was so hooked on drugs that when I looked at them and said, God can deliver you from your drug addiction, they laughed at me in my face.
One day, this guy up here on the right, he's pretty radical. His name's Thomas DeRoos. This is the guy I'm talking about. I said, man, Thomas, God's going to deliver you from all that. We just getting ready to go down the water in Jesus' name. I said, I don't care what you've done in your past. When you come up out of this water, it's going to be gone in Jesus' name. He said, I don't think you understand. I said, I don't think you understand. This is the first day, and every day is going to get better after this. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. I'm trying to get you to understand. There's power in the blood. So one more time, if we can go into a place of warfare prayer. Now, I know some of you think, man, there's visitors here, preacher. We're not supposed to do this. But that's when we're supposed to do this. Because you never know who needs what beside you. There might be somebody that you, it's your best friend and you think you know them. But they need help. And right now, we need to plead the blood of Jesus and pray over this service one more time. We have some prayer requests that need to be prayed over. Ralph Smith said, I have a special unspoken request that's a family need. When I get to praying, Brother Steve and Brother Jason's going to turn around and lay hands on Brother Ralph, and we're going to expect God to work a miracle for that step special need. We have a lot of needs in this house, a lot that come to mind. Sister Perry's here tonight, and we're thankful for that. We're going to continue to pray for her. I don't know where she went, but I've seen her earlier. Amen. We have Brother Garland that stands on our prayer request, and we have Sister Kasner that's here tonight, but we continue to pray for her. If there's anybody else that comes to your mind specifically, make sure you call them out before God. I know Sister Tina Coffey is in some severe pain. If you can't remember any other name, just pray for somebody that's beside you. And if you don't even know their name, just say, God, touch this person in this shirt that's right here, this white shirt, blue shirt, green shirt, red shirt, purple shirt, whatever they're wearing. Just pray for them. There's power in prayer. I feel something's going to happen in this house tonight. It's going to change our life. In Jesus' name. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we love you so much. Rendo kandikoro taseto badiatai. Heal tonight, God. Work miracles tonight, God. Shake the very gates of hell tonight, God. Let somebody leave this place completely delivered. Let somebody leave this place completely set free. Let somebody leave this place completely changed tonight. Lord, I pray right now for my brothers and my sisters that's made it to the house of the Lord. I pray that Sister Perry would be touched. Sister Castor would continue to be healed. I pray for Brother Klein right now that you would miracle, Lord, just give him one. You pour out your spirit, Lord, on Brother Bill LaFoon tonight. Brother Travis LaFoon's back tonight. Sister Michelle and Duke that's sick tonight. God, every one of these people that are not able to make it to the house of the Lord, I rebuke any sickness in the name of Jesus. We bind the demonic spirit of disease. And we preach up a tote a roto side. We cast it back from whence it came. Let there be a torment on the tormentor tonight. Let there be a reverse of a curse in this house. Shake the very place that we've been living in. Manifest your anointing in your shatai. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. High five somebody around you. Say it's going to happen. Hallelujah. If you didn't believe it, you need to make sure you try to believe it before you sit down. You may be seated. It's going to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is here right now. I know we're supposed to do announcements, but God is here right now. Wow. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Karsten. Thank you. Somebody follow the Holy Ghost. Hey! He tell him a hosha hai will cut up. He tell him a hosha kataya the number hosha.
I believe God wants to do something supernatural right now. I don't want to go any further. I know I'm supposed to do announcements. There's other songs to be sung. But right now in the spirit, God is in this place. His footfall is here. We need miracles, signs, and wonders to follow the believer. The Bible says they will in my name. Jesus name we smite anything God that's not of you right now we rebuke cancer right now in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah In the name of the Lord. Come on, now, come on. I'm going to touch your book. Come on, Abundant Life. Praise the Lord. God's going to do something supernatural. If this is your first time to Abundant Life, the House of Mercy, I want to say thank you for coming. But one thing we don't do here is we don't program very much. And when we do program, we put a big letter there that lets Jesus know he can take over whenever he wants. And this preacher had me fired up this morning. Uh, he started talking about remembering and this song came to my mind this is old 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 here amen I was a teenager when we sang this well this modern day opinion says this joy cannot last it's an illusion of the spirit and a thing of the past but when I think about his goodness I'm gonna do that one more time. Well, this modern day opinion says this joy cannot last. It's an illusion of the spirit and a thing of the past. But when I think about his goodness and how he's blessing me today, I got to rejoice and let the spirit have its way cause I remember when my burdens rolled away, I remember when God's spirit came to stay like a newborn babe. I was sanctified and saved. And I remember when my... See, before we get too carried away, I knelt down at an altar. I was burdened down with sin. I had no peace, no happiness within. But then I went down in the water. I wish I had a Holy Ghost witness. I went down in the water and I was buried in Jesus' name. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I ain't never been the same. I remember. Well, praise the Lord. Some were weeping. Some were shouting in the pews. So full of joy. 
They didn't know what to do. You feel better? Oh, I feel awesome. Yeah, I knew it. So full of joy, they didn't know what to do. Some were leaping as they repented of their sins. I was one of those I remember way back then. And I remember when my burdens rolled away. I remember when God's spirit came to stay like a newborn babe. I sanctified and saved. I remember when my burdens rolled away. Well, this modern day opinion says this joy cannot last. It's an illusion of the spirit and a thing of the past. But when I think about his goodness, he's blessed me today. I got to rejoice, let the spirit have its way. Cause I remember when my burdens rolled away. I remember when God's spirit came to stay like a newborn babe. I was sanctified and saved. I remember when my Will you clap your hands to God and shout with a triumphant voice in this place? Well, glory. Well, glory. Feels good when you get a miracle. Thank God for what just happened right here. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe God wants to do something else. If you're ready to receive it, he's ready to give it right now. fact we're going to just be apostolic if you want it right now amen if you want anything from the lord why don't you just stand up right now just stand up if you want anything from the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah if you need something from god now why don't you lift your hands right now if you need something from god if somebody's beside you they need something and you don't why don't you pray for them right now this is apostolic. You don't have to be a preacher to pray for the sick. Sister Coffee, release something into Sister Allison right now. Headaches need to leave in Jesus' name. This could be the last night that girl has a headache. Doctors don't know what to do, and this could be the last night right now. Miracles. Miracles. You need a Holy Ghost? God can give it to you right now. You need a touch from God? God can give it to you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Miracles. 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 Somebody receiving the Holy Ghost is a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can be a young person today and still want the things of God. Hallelujah. I feel like the Lord's told me four times that there's some young people here that needs to release. Amen. Some things in this atmosphere. Amen. Some young people that are on fire. Maybe some of you young people that are on fire. I seen one young man take off, run first. He responded to this preacher. Hallelujah. God can do it. I said God can do it. But we got to be willing. We got to be willing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I don't know what song they're singing next. I know we're going to take up an offering here in a second. When they do. I wish some young people would just release some things in the spirit. Watch that. Watch out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean it. The Holy Ghost spoke to me like four times. He said there's young people in this house that has the anointing on them to release tonight what God wants to do in this house. And uh, you know, we don't always, God don't always work through a dance. Sometimes he works through just walking and praying. And uh, just being sensitive to the Holy Ghost is what's important. There you go, Katie. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be sensitive to the Spirit. Hallelujah. Man, oh man. All right. I'm going to behave myself here. Hallelujah. Give me just a second. I'll get out of the way. Amen. God's not finished, but I'll get out of the way, and then you can take it over. Amen. We have a very important week ahead of us. You may be seated. Amen. Somebody say this is very important. Wednesday night, there'll be no service here. Instead, there'll be a dress rehearsal, trauma practice in the stead of service. I'm asking all of our church people that normally come on Wednesday night to be here. There will be nobody else here. It's not open to the public. It's just open to our church that night. Be there and uh, be a part of that. If you're visiting tonight, you're welcome to be here Wednesday night. We're going to be starting a drama. The drama is entitled More Than Just a Man. It's about the life and the death of Jesus Christ. And it is very powerful. Last year, we had a lot of backsliders pray through and uh, people being touched of God. And uh, the last night of the, of the drama, we sang More Than Just a Man, which is a song. And the uh, place came unglued. And uh, God just really moved in the house. This is an old drama, but it's got a new flair. There's a lot of new scenes this year. So we want you to be a part of that if you can. And that's at 7.30 on Wednesday. But every other night on Thursday and Friday during the week, it's 7. And then Saturday, it starts at 6 p.m. That's four different times that you can hit it if you're here tonight and you're visiting. You're welcome to be at any of those. And uh, we're going to be having a move of God every night. And uh, <clears throat> Yes. 
Amen. If you have nothing else to do this week, not only can you come out to that, but please be in prayer for our drama team. And uh, we need it desperately. I need it. The rest of them are perfect. The pastor needs it. And uh, me and my mom, we need it. And uh, we need anybody that's willing to help out in other ways. If you're willing to usher or be a volunteer uh, in the nursery, please try to help out in that way. See Sister Betsy if you could be a blessing and help out. Maybe you're not about being on stage, but you wouldn't mind helping out and be a part of the victory of God. So you can be a part of the nursery staff or the ushers, and we're just going to have a Lord uh, have his way in that place down there. And uh, I was praying down there. We had a prayer meeting. And I've never went that deep in travail in my life. And uh, I was in a place with God. And the Lord began to deal with me about souls of people. And uh, what are we doing? If we're not reaching souls. This is just a country club. If we're not reaching souls. And I don't want to be a part of a country club. I want to be the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I could preach right now on that subject, but point is made and uh, be here I went into a place with God and the Lord said uh, some things to me about souls that I'll probably preach to this church when I was in that gym but there was a spot on that ramp whenever the Holy Ghost hit me when I was coming down it and I started praying everybody had kind of left and I leaned back and I went into place with God When I came home, my wife never says this, and she sees me after I pray all the time. She said, man, you've had a prayer meeting. I said, what are you talking about? She said, your face looks different. There's something different. I feel like there's going to be people saved. And there's a certain song that the devil has fought the whole time we've practiced it. That as soon as it came on, I told Sister Hallett, I said, there will be a prophetic utterance that comes from this song. It's going to happen. I feel like a miracle is going to come through this entire drama. And it might just be one person gets saved, but that's enough for me. Amen. So. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the majority of this church will be in there. I think there's like 70-some-odd costumes this year. Thanks what Sister Hallett said. That's a lot of parts and roles, and so be a part of it if you can. We'd love to have you there. Also, every night uh, before uh, the drama, an hour, uh, no, two hours before the drama, we'll start eating. And if you haven't had anything to eat or you don't have time to eat before the drama, you're more than welcome to come there and eat. It's $5 for adults, $3 for kids. There will not be food during the drama. It will be before the drama. Please be a part of that if you want to. Also, um, ALCA will be serving walking taco desserts before the drama. So if you're interested, I say something wrong? Walking tacos and desserts. Same thing. (laughs) Ask my stomach. My stomach never says, hold on a second, that's dessert. It just says, bring it on. I got to thinking, this is a great time for this moment. This is very carnal. I got to thinking after the cruise I went on, I put my pants on today, and I really didn't need a belt. And I thought, if you don't need a belt, would that be considered more like a tummy necklace? You know you know what I mean. Vanity. I feel like I'm in vanity tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
All of it's the same to me. Walking tacos and desserts. Make sure you put the and there and come and be a part of that. Because you might not like walking tacos, but there isn't a soul in this room that don't like a dessert. You might not like chocolate. You might like fruit. But everybody likes desserts. Don't act like you're too spiritual for that moment right there. That's powerful. Amen. Desserts. Amen. Sister Hallett's doing such a great job in directing us. And uh, we're thankful for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Chris has been doing a great job preaching. Visitors, if this is your first time to our revival, we're so glad you're here. Amen. Amen. Why don't you, if you're from Abundant Life, look around right now, and if you see somebody halfway close to you, why don't you just walk over and shake their hand right now? Will you stand, all of us? Because we're going to take up an offering. If there's somebody halfway decent sign close to you, just walk over and shake their hand and make them feel welcome. Come on, don't be shy. They're visiting. Maybe they've been here before, but it's been a while. Be friendly. Kind of looks like a picnic. Praise God. Amen. We're glad you're here, visitor. Abundant life loves when, you, when anybody shows up, and we're thankful you're here. All of you that came back, thank you for being our friend. Amen. Amen. I think that's all the announcements I have, and I want to make anyway. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in giving and our offering. The ushers are going to wait on us today. The ushers are going to wait on us today. And as they sing, I want the young people to get sincere and serious. I want you to remember something. You could be the, the catalyst that prepares the way for the miraculous. We're going to pray over the offering, brethren. In Jesus' name. If you'll just wait right there, right where you're at. Brother Scobie and Brother Miller, we're going to pray. Jesus, we thank you for this offering. Everybody that gives tonight, I'm asking you to bless them tenfold. Lord, the blessings can be hindered by the people who are not willing to receive or give. I'm asking you to make a way for these people, Lord, tonight. Let finances be blessed in here for all those that can't even afford to give. I'm asking you to lower their heart, bless them triple and double. Their anointing of the Lord just be on them. Have your way in this place as we wave this offering before you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Amen. Give unto the Lord as we sing. Oh, yes, I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. My soul. He woke me up. He started me on my way. Oh, guides me on my journey. And he keeps me day by day. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. For myself. Yes, I know Jesus. I know, Jesus. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. For myself, He woke me up. Started me on my way. He guides me. And He keeps me day. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. I know Jesus, yes, I know Jesus for myself. And yes, I know him for myself. Oh, yes, he'll do just what he said. And I don't have to ask anybody else. I met this man for myself. Yes, I know. I know Jesus, yes I know, I know Jesus, yes I know Jesus, for myself, 
Lord, when yes, I know him for myself. And yes, he'll do just what he said. Hey, and I don't have to ask anybody else. I've met this man for myself. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. For myself, oh yes, I know Jesus. I, yes, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. For myself, He woke me up. this morning. He started me on my way. He guides me on my journey. And He keeps me day by day. And yes, I know. I know Jesus, yes I know Jesus, yes I know Jesus for myself, oh, and yes I know him for myself, and yes he'll do just what he said, what he said. and I don't have to ask anybody else, I met this man for myself. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus for myself. Oh, and yes, I know Him for myself. Oh, and yes, He'll do just what He said. Oh, I don't have to ask anybody else. I've met this man for myself. Myself. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. Yes, I know. I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. Oh, for myself. And yes, I know him for myself. And yes, he'll do just what he said. And I don't have to ask anybody else. I've met this man. For myself, yes, I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. For myself. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know him. I know him for myself. I know him for myself. I don't have to ask anybody else. I remember back when I was a young person, somebody would say something about, well, you know, pray for me. I'd say, well, let me go get Bishop. And we'll pray for you. And then I got this relationship with the Lord. Pray for me. I remember this one day I was on this roof. I told one of my coworkers, I said, I'm sick. I got to go home. And he just laid his hand right on me. I'll never forget the man's name. His name was Gene Doctor. He laid his hand right on my head and started praying. I'm standing on a roof. I'm a Pentecostal preacher. I was a novice, but I was a Pentecostal preacher. And this guy's got his hand on my head praying for me on top of a roof in the middle of a construction site. I didn't know what else to do. I just lift my hand. I lift my hand and said, God, heal me right now in Jesus' name. We're so, we're, we're so backward, and we say we have the reality of what God's trying to give out. I know him for myself. I don't have to ask anybody else. Young people, I don't have to go get mom. I don't have to go get dad. I don't have to go get pastor. I don't need bishop. I just... I can release the prayer of faith right now, and the prayer of faith will save the sick right now. 
Hallelujah. Well, I don't want to, I, I could go in the place where God's wanting us to go, but there ain't no sense in me taking up any more time. Brother Chris has been doing an amazing job preaching to us, speaking to us, talking to us, helping us. Amen. I want to dance. I don't want to die. Hallelujah. I don't want to die. I don't want to be in a place of death. Thank you. I'll go ahead and preach it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't want to be in a place of death. I want to, I want to be in a place of life. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. We named our name Abundant Life because God gave me a vision. But the reality is, is past that, we also named ourselves the House of Mercy. That's yes, our sir. slogan. The reason is, is that the only way sometimes to get people to abundant life is to be able to have a place where they can come where mercy abounds. And that's where you're at tonight. We don't judge here. Not because we don't have the right. Because the Bible says that we do. I went over like a lead balloon. I said, not because we don't have the right, because the Bible says that we do. We don't judge here because we want to make sure everybody knows how much mercy covers. It don't matter what you came here tonight like. It don't matter how messed up your life is. It don't matter how hurt you are, and it don't matter who hurts you. God wants to touch you tonight. And I believe this man of God is going to speak to our hearts. Amen. This is a man, amen, that has become my friend. And uh, I appreciate him so much. And I just want him to take his liberty. Everybody say, God bless Brother Chris. God bless you. You can be seated. She's a big old ship. She's sitting mighty low in the water. Been on her maiden voyage ever since the blood of Calvary bought her. She's weathered violent storms. Some passengers dropped overboard and drowned. But she's not just some Titanic. She's the church, and she's not going down. Sail Brave what lurks in a cold, dark night. Sail along, ship of Zion, to 
Can you see that beacon light? Sail on, ship of Zion. He's on board. You're not alone. Sail on till you hear the captain say land's in sight. You made it home. This ship was launched from a hill outside Jerusalem. Caught a brand new gust of wind when it breezed through the upper room. Round all the store with a jail cell song at midnight. What makes you think she's gonna sink like some modern day typhoon? Sail on, ship of Zion, brave what lurks in a cold, dark night. Sail on, ship of Zion, till you see that beacon light. Sail on, ship of Zion. He's on board, you're not alone. Sail on till you hear the captain say land's in sight. You made it home. Mm. Well, thank you, Jesus. I got joy. Like a river, and it runs right through my feet. I got joy like a river. I can feel it flowing all over me. I can feel the change. I've been set free. Glory, hallelujah, I've been redeemed. I'm so glad I got joy. Joy, joy, joy. I got joy like a river and it runs right through my feet. I got joy like a river. I can feel it flowing all over me. I can feel the change. I've been set free. Glory, hallelujah. I've been redeemed. I'm so glad I've got joy. Joy, joy, joy. Well, he gave me joy. Yes, he gave me joy. I can't hear you. Wonderful joy. Everlasting joy. Jesus gave it to me. I know he'll give it to you. I'm so glad I got joy. I'm so glad I got joy, 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 joy. Sing it with me now. I got joy like a river, and it runs right through my feet. I got joy like a river. I can feel it flowing all over me. I can feel the change. I've been set free. Glory, hallelujah, been redeemed. I'm so glad I got joy. Yeah, I'm so glad I got joy. I'm so glad I got joy. Joy, joy, joy. I got 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 joy, 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 joy, joy. Joy, 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 joy. I got joy like a river. Well, it runs right through my feet. Yeah, I got joy like a river. I can feel it flowing all over me. I can feel the change. I've been set free. Glory, hallelujah. I've been redeemed. 
I'm so glad I've got your I'm so glad I got joy. I'm so glad I got joy. Joy, joy, joy. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home on the morning train. That evening train might be too late. Don't look at me like that. I'm going home on the morning train. Mm, I'm going home on the morning train. How about you? I'm going home on the morning train. That evening train just might be too late. I'm going home on the morning train. Oh! <laughs> One of these mornings, it won't be long. You're gonna look for me. I'm gonna be gone. Going up to heaven, sing and shout. Won't be nobody there to put me out. Yeah. One of these mornings, won't be long. You're gonna look for me. I'm gonna be gone. Going up to heaven, sing and shout. Won't be nobody there. Put me out, yeah. I'm going home on the morning train. Going home on the morning train. Evening train might be too late. I'm going home on the morning train. One of these mornings won't be long. You're going to look for me. I'm going to be gone. I'm going up to heaven. Going to sing and shout. Won't be nobody there. Put me out here one of these mornings. Won't be long. Look for me. I'm gonna be gone. Going up to heaven. Sing and shout. Won't be nobody there. Put me out here. I'm going home on the morning train. Going home on the morning train. Evening train might be too late. I'm going home on the morning train one more time. Going home on the morning train. Going home on the morning train. Evening train might be too late. I'm going home on the morning train. Come on, let's give him some glory right now. get past the light and I see what color I had. It's, it's cool. Everything's all right. Man, I am enjoying myself and what a great spirit in the house tonight. And uh, it's an old carpenter term. In some ways, sometimes we feel like a square peg in a round hole. But I've torn down enough old buildings and attempted to tear up some old beams. There wasn't a sign of a metal nail anywhere in the building, and it took a chainsaw to get some of them beams apart because of square pegs in round holes. <laughs> and so tonight, I'm just going to obey the Lord. You can't go wrong obeying the Lord. Good to see all of you in the house of the Lord, and there's such a free spirit of liberty tonight, and before I read scripture, I want to say how thankful I am, how impressed I am with this good church. You got a great past and a great legacy, amen, amen. amen. and you, you got a great, you're a great people, you're great people, and I'm going to address myself to everybody in this house tonight, but I want to focus in on something, and it may be just a little different style. 
but just hang with me. Because I want you to understand that we're hearing a lot of voices today. We are hearing a lot of voices today, and not all of them are godly voices. Amen, amen. Turn with me to Mark chapter 5. You young people, I, wanna, I just want to commend you today. Loving your pastor, loving what he preaches. Hallelujah. I know it's not the case here. I'm not, there's nothing between the lines here. But I've ministered and pastored young people that when they went home, they couldn't hardly even enjoy their family. It was horrible. And many of them, I said, how do you make it? I'm praying for you. How are you making it? Well, I enjoy what I can enjoy. And then when it gets to that, I just go to my room and I shut the door and I have a prayer meeting or I turn my music on and amen. I know that's not the problem here. But you know what? What I'm talking about tonight, all of us may have to go to our room and pull the door to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I'll try not to get the cart before the horse. It's 716 in case you haven't looked. And so let me start. Hallelujah. You've been such a kind audience and put up with me. You've got, you got to be kind. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mark chapter 5. And uh, I'm going to read 15 scriptures. Is that all right? Hallelujah. So if you kind of get tired after three and you have to, you can sit down. But I'm going to read 15. Uh -huh. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked. What a word, plucked. Not burst, but plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus, he just saw him. Didn't hear him. Didn't hear a song. There was no concert. There was no platform. He just saw Jesus afar off. He ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee, only demons beg, hallelujah, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion. For we are many. If you examine that in the original language, he's saying, we are legion for we are regimented. We are in unity. Hallelujah. Okay. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nine to the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils, all, all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave or permission, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. And were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what was done. 
and they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid if the Lord will help me for the next few minutes I want to preach to you embracing the voices dimming the conflict embracing the voices dimming the conflict pastor would you pray Bless you. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm going to help that preacher preach tonight. <laughs> Just like you've done every night. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Embracing the voices. Dimming the conflict. I am going to address you in an allegorical manner tonight and uh, just bear with me okay uh, I'm sure that before I'm done we'll do some screaming and yelling and call it preaching praise God if you're here without the Holy Ghost tonight I'm aiming right at you if you're here and you're just kind of cold in the Lord but you really wouldn't call yourself back but I'm aiming at you if you're here and and you're just out and out, you're just gone. You're just going through the motions. I'm preaching at you. In fact, if you're here tonight and you're hearing things, I'm preaching to you. We're going to have fun. But I've got a very serious, solemn intent in this service. Whew. I thought as the scenery flew by my window, I was on my way home after a long day at work. I pulled up into my driveway, and shut the engine off, and just sat there for a moment before opening the door and getting out of the car fumbling with my keys while walking up to my little castle of independence. I thought of the busy day just past. In fact, the last few days had been as hectic as I have remembered in a while. The demands of the job, the expectations of my coworkers, and even my friends have seemingly been at an all-time high. I guess I just needed some quiet time to reflect and uh, give my brain a rest. You know, just a little me time. You know, where there's nobody's voice to intrude upon my serenity and peace. I went inside my little apartment, and I'm going to tell you up front that I have utilized this from a female point of view. It's really non-gender specific, but we're all used to picking on women. And so... You women are tough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, it's going to be okay. I went inside my par apartment, locked the door behind me, dropped my keys on the table behind the door, hung my coat up, went into the kitchen, rustled up a snack, something to eat, drink. Wasn't long. Till I was settled into the recliner and just 
letting the day ooze and seep out of me. Suddenly I sat straight up as I remembered, I can't be sitting here. I got church tonight. I groaned as I gave in to the soulish conflict that I began to encounter. You know, the conflict had been a little more frequent recently. I'd never used to even give it any thought. Up until lately, I, it was just a part of me, you know, like walking and talking. I don't think I'm going to walk across the floor. Just walk across the floor. I ain't even talk about talking because most of us don't think about that. Anyway, I, I don't think about it. I just, that was good, folks. Right there, that was good. Yeah, some of you got it. Hmm. I just, I just got, I just did it, you know. I just got ready always and, and uh, just went to church. But lately, <clears throat> I've been entertaining the conflict and, and just not wanting to go. I know that's a foreign concept to you, but just bear with my inane idiocy up here. Praise God. I used to look so forward to just going to church and being with our church family. Have I got any old timers in the house that remember that? Okay. What's going to be fun tonight? Praise God. I mean, what's happening to me? I, uh, oh, I heard pastor preach it. It's just that war in my members. You know, I, oh well, I guess I better just get up and get ready. Finally, clean and fresh. I looked into my closet and tried to decide what to wear to church. Ha! As if I had a choice. Long dresses. Long sleeves, many colors, and multiple ways to wear this with that, and I wore it all. But all in all, boy, some of you looking at me, I'm just, I'm just not going to look back at you. Uh-huh. <laughs> all in all, um, just felt dowdy, old-fashioned. Less than chic, that's not an Arab, that's C-H-I-C. Less than chic, but don't I sound intelligent. And you know, less than up to date. I don't know. I guess I just don't feel a part of anything these days. I used to be close to my brothers and sisters in church, but... I just don't anymore. Actually, I'm beginning to feel a little more relaxed in myself when I'm on the job <clears throat> meeting its demands. Wow, where did that thought come from? But it's true. I, I have heard the suggestions from a multiplicity of voices that have been clamoring for my attention. It's been constant lately. I'm going to pick on you girls, okay? I know y'all love me, so it's cool. Amen. You love your pastor, you love your church, so it's safe. I can pick on you. You don't have to wear them dresses all the time. That church you go to has got too many rules. They ain't got scripture for all them rules. They're just judging you. You got it. Your discernment's working the same spirit. Anytime you hear that mess, they're just judging you. They spiritually come out of the closet, folks. They're blatant and real. Oh, boy. 
I might as well have fun tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And I guess little by little I've been given in. At first it's just a little foundation, you know. I, I, I really I don't look at that as makeup. It's just kind of blending my complexion. It's not quite as splotchy. You know, 20 years ago they were calling it color me beautiful. They didn't realize that all of their good intentions, there was a spirit, not what they were doing, but where they were going that began to take place. You know. Right? Hello? Ah, you girls still with me? I mean, they, I'm going to tell you right now, there ain't nothing any prettier, more beautiful than these clean-faced young ladies that don't have to have all the different colors to make them look like a weird, blinking stoplight. An old preacher who's dead now used to make a statement with Marvin Hicks. He used to say, got so much makeup on that look like they're trying to fill the Grand Canyon with putty. Okay, that was funny. You know, I, I didn't used to use anything. I just kind of blended my complexion for a while. And then after a while, um, I began to use a little more stuff and a little of this and that and the other. And, and, and I'd come to work. And my coworkers who used to reproach me, my coworkers who used to mock me, my coworkers who used to tell me that it, you ain't got scripture for all that. There's too many. You know them? You know who I'm talking about? Do you folks know who I'm talking about? They started telling me how good I look. And I have to say it felt good. And after a while, I just embraced the voices. I guess I always just wanted to please everybody, but that's impossible. And so I guess I have to choose who I'm going to please. So I'm just going to please myself. That's some more of this idolatry of self-will you were talking about this morning. I guess it never occurred to me that in deciding to please myself that I had to choose whom I was going to align myself with. And I found that embrace, in, in embracing the voices of those who levered themselves between me and, and my church and me and my God, that the other voices of conviction and conscience and conflict just just kind of kind of dimmed and I found that I could dress just the way I wanted to and I could go wherever I pleased I could come and go from church whenever I pleased and as long as I wanted to without the slightest compunction or conviction and now you know now it didn't happen overnight is this okay it didn't happen overnight, but, but the more I silenced the voice of conviction and conflict, the more, the more that I pushed back to the edge, uh, the back burner of my consciousness, those voices, I found myself on the job and um, some nights of the weekend and the weekend and I found myself the latest celebrated uh, party animal. Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so uh, felt good. Am I being too honest? It felt good to be celebrated. And to have loosed myself from the bondage of church restrictions. I noticed, though, that when the party was over, and I went back to my little castle of independence and pulled up in the driveway and, and, uh, 
the voices that I embraced during the day didn't come home with me. I laid my head on the pillow eventually that night and the other conflict started. What fellowship hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Tossing, turning, pulling the pillow over my head doesn't matter. I hear the clamoring voice, the clamoring conflict. You know you were not created for this. You're a child of God. You belong in the house of the Lord, basking in his presence and power and peace. Tossing, turning, rolling. What are you doing out here? Oh, this archaic, antique, and outdated language tonight. Praise God. And so I tossed and turned on my pillow. The light, the fight was enjoined. And the war was on. And, uh, but it was a short-lived war because dawn came, morning came, and, and I awakened and I went to work and I embraced the voices once again. The conflict dimmed. The fight got less and less. Carnal reasoning and the voices that clamored for my darker self won. And I embraced them. And then I became them. And now that new little girl that was just hired on, I was able to counsel with her and make her feel better. I was able to tell her what they told me. I was able to join my voice, the clamoring voices that I embraced. I was able to tell her, well, I wouldn't want you to change for anything in the world unless your heart was in it. But you need to understand that those rules and restrictions, they don't have any scripture for that. And then little by little, I see the little girl who was just hired on. I see her beginning to change. I not only embraced the voices, I became them. And the voice of conviction did more than just dim. It died. And I heard it. No more. Hallelujah. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, because of that, because of that reasoning, and he wrote this to a church that was filled with the Holy Ghost. He wrote that to a church that was already baptized in Jesus' name, the only plan of salvation. Come on. Hallelujah. When God saw this conflict that they refused to handle, wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, boy, 
I know this isn't popular kind of preaching. But if anything dies in our life, you better hope the voice of conviction does not die. It's one thing for you to push that voice of conviction back to the back burner, but it's entirely another thing for you to embrace the voices long enough until the voice of conviction, it's no longer just dim, it dies. It doesn't speak anymore. You need to watch out for that day The conviction doesn't bother you anymore. Hallelujah. 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 I remember it's been 25, 30 years ago, better than 30 years ago now, when this so-called conscience doctrine began sweeping through the country. And folks are saying, if your conscience doesn't condemn you, don't worry about it. You're not born with convictions, folks. And you're not born with a conscience. Convictions and conscience are the upshot. They are the symptom of an environment. Amen. If you're raising a plate, breaking, fist clenching, yelling, screaming environment, guess what? That's the kind of, that's the kind of conscience you're going to develop about that kind of an environment. You would think, oh, I'll never be that. I'll never do that. But they do. It just repeats itself and it cycles again and again because, <laughs> amen. Your conscience is developed by your atmosphere. That's why it's so important in the house of God, flowing in the spirit, hallelujah, hearing the voice of God, amen, and refusing to give in to the voices that clamor for your attention outside of the presence of God because you can push conviction away so long until it's more than just a dim, all but forgotten voice. It's dead. You need to be careful lest your conscience dies. Hallelujah for this cause. For this cause, what cause? Because they wanted to do what they wanted to do. And they wanted to embrace the voices and not pay attention to the convictions that God was pounding at their heart with. For this cause, God gave them up. Now, he wasn't through with them. He just gave them up to vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, the men leave the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet up until this point. God was letting them get enough of the sin. Okay, go ahead. If that's what you want, get all you want. I can't seem to get your attention any other way. Go ahead. Eat all of that you want to. Get just as sick as you please. Maybe you'll get sick enough to change, but look what it said. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, he didn't just give them up. Now he gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled not just affected but filled filled with all unrighteousness fornication by the way that word fornication is not in the NIV you'll never find it it's not in the ESV you'll never find it the word fornication is almost singly attributed to the King James Version I just thought I'd throw that in. Hallelujah. Amen. Because this world and the voices want to change everything that you believe. Full of, full of wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmoved. 
merciful who knowing the judgment of God. That's one thing that did not change. He gave them up and then he gave them over to that disqualified, dysfunctional mind. Hallelujah. But one thing they did not forget was the judgments of God. But in spite of knowing the judgment of God, they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. I'm preaching to a generation today that's in danger of embracing the voices and dimming the conflict of soulless realm of conviction. I'm preaching to people today that feel more and more justified and qualified to look at the preacher and say, well, I really don't believe it like that. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not criticizing you for not shouting tonight. If any criticism should be leveled, it ought to be leveled toward me. But I promise you today, I feel such a move. Amen. To tell you this today, if there's anything you refuse to let die in your life, you better refuse to let the voice of conviction die in your life. There are three areas that we really worry about in Christianity. And that is the area of reprobatism, the area of blasphemy, and the area of hypocrisy. You've probably heard me say it uh, before, uh, but I'm saying it again because all three of those things has a commonality. And none of those three things is about what you do. What you do is a result of those three things. Amen. It's what you do is a manifestation of the core problem with these three things, reprobate, blasphemy, and hypocrisy. It's not about what you do. It's about how you think, how you think. I've told you the story. I'm not going to tell you again. As a few times in my life, I was determined to do what I wanted to do, and my good old mother, hallelujah, she beat me until she got tired of beating me, hallelujah. She whooped me until she got tired of whooping me and then finally she just let me you remember the story don't you she let me get all the butter I wanted and I thought oh boy I was about three years old I thought oh boy I mean to tell you I've got by with this and I ate butter until it was from ear to ear smeared all over my hands I'd stuck my hand down in a butter dish and when it was about all done and I'm you know I mean I mean to tell you and she never did whoop me over it she never did she just walked up behind me and I kind of saw that that shadow fall over me and I looked up oh get ready business is picking up it's amazing what you can feel and know intuitively at three years old I'm telling you I knew business was picking up all she said to me bishop was this you had enough butter (laughs) hallelujah Caught me watching TV one time. Instead of beating the fire out of me, she said, you like what you see? Well, it got quiet that night. It got quiet that night. She said that to me too. It got quiet the night. She said, you had enough butter. But you know what happened to me? Brother Phil, I got so sick. And I still like a little bit of baked potato with my butter. But I don't eat butter by itself. I don't eat butter by itself no more. And I certainly don't sneak and get the butter. Uh, Besides all that, I don't have to sneak and do nothing. And neither do you. But sometimes God talks to us and says, all right, I'm going to give you up. If that's what you want, just go ahead and get all you want. If that's the direction you're wanting to go, you just go ahead and march on, buddy. Hallelujah. You just go ahead, young lady. He's winking at you, wink back. Get all you want. But there is a point in your life when you are full and sated off of the illicit that God's spirit deals with you one more time. I know this is not the popular message you wanted to hear tonight. But God deals with you the last time. Did I say the last time? 
Oh, I'm not trying to scare nobody. I'm just being real. He deals with you that last time, could be the last time, and he tries to reach you. And you're full, but you're not satisfied. Well, hello. Hallelujah. You know, it's the Old Testament again. It's Pharaoh saying, I'll chew one more night with the frogs. My problem with all that is when you plan on being forgiven. In the Old Testament, I believe it was David, was it not? That he called it the great transgression. We can sin a lot of things. But when you have the sin of assumption on you, you assume that you can be forgiven. I'm not talking about you did a thing you was in the middle of it. You repented. I'm talking about you planned on it. You knew it was. Oh, boy, oh, boy. If you feel conviction tonight, the greatest miracle of all is still in your life. And I thank God for the shouting, the running, the aisle. Bless God, we need to do it every time we come. Amen. So I said, well, I just don't know if that's the will of God all the time. Well, glad to meet you, God. Praise God. I just think it's time to praise God any time and every time. I do, but there are times whenever we blow off the spirit of conviction. I'm going to tell you, it's one of the most blessed voices you'll ever hear in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you, we've got a world today. Amen. They act spiritual, they prophesy, and it comes to pass. They give messages in tongues and interpret. They look like the world. There is no change in them. There is no separation from the world. Why do you think he said, remove not the ancient landmark? And boy, we're good at preaching that. Well, we're not good at preaching the next verse where he said, neither enter ye into the field of the fatherless. Okay, they raise corn just like our corn. They raise flocks just like we raise flocks. You can get caught up in the emotion of their church just you like to get caught up in the emotion of ours. But they're fatherless. I said they're fatherless and don't you forget it. Oh, I'm in a mess tonight. We're in the middle of a generation that's embraced the voices. And they've dimmed the conflict. If there's conflict in your life tonight, you better count yourself so blessed. The voice of conviction. On Sunday night, this is what greater way to celebrate than to know that God still deals with our heart. God still says, why don't you push that aside? Well, I ain't no scripture for that. Well, that's okay, but I'm dealing with your heart. I feel like it would be better. It's men of God, like your pastor, that walk up to the pulpit and say, you know what? I really don't have a whole lot of scripture for this, but I feel like it's wise in the spirit if we walk in this direction and not that one. And good people follow their man of God. That's how the spirit of conviction works. There are things that they did not have two and three hundred years ago that we have today that are not spelled out only by the principle of the word. They're spelled out. And if we embrace the voices and dim the conflict, we'll be a church that you can't tell us from anybody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so tonight, I'm not, I'm not just kind of making something up. I got enough sense to know what to preach. That moves people. 
titillates their emotions. I know how to do that. All of us do. All of us do. Hallelujah. But what about if you're sitting here tonight and you don't have the Holy Ghost? What if you sitting here tonight, cold in heart, backslid, just kind of backed up, here but not involved, faithful but not loving? Come on. And what if the trumpet of the Lord should sound tonight? Well, I just believe things has got to happen before, you know, the rapture. He can call your number anytime. Anytime. My brother Randy was 18 years old driving his own rig. He had a West Coast Jimmy with a 318 in it, and buddy, he was blowing cold down the highway. Been driving since he was 13, 14 years old. Looked like he had a world by the tail. Called mama. It was September, I think it was September 16th, about in the early hours of the morning. He said, I'm getting ready to pass through Memphis. He said, I'll be home in the morning. I'm on my way home. He passed through West Memphis, left front tire blue. Make a long story short, he went out into eternity. Thank God he was ready to meet the Lord. I'm just saying you don't know when God is going to call your number. You don't know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about be ye ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. I was in Picayune, Mississippi, in that area, preaching revival in a semi-large church there many, many, many years ago. And that night, we'd had probably 30 or 40 receive the Holy Ghost in that revival in about three weeks or so. And that night I said, I don't know, but I said, I feel like the Lord really is impressing my mind to beg somebody to pray tonight. Because judgment is just down the road and around the corner. God spoke to me. And I begged and pleaded Finally got to a place where, you know, you just, you just have to let go. A lot of people prayed. The folks got deliverance, but I didn't really feel that who it was for had made a move. That night on the way home, a mother and her 14-year-old, I think it was, daughter, up around the curve and up over a hill, head on into another vehicle, That mother had to lay there on the side of the road and listen to her 14-year-old daughter scream, I'm on fire. I'm burning. I'm not talking about stories somebody else said. I'm talking about what I know. You don't know when it's going to Are you trying to scare me? No, not really. Because folks can't be scared 2016. You can't scare folks today. They've watched too many movies and read too many books can't scare nobody today. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but I am trying to give you a reality check. You don't know when the Lord's going to call your number. Man, I mean, one day, one day, I'm standing beside my brother, and he's fixing to leave with a load. I'm standing right next to him, and he kicked that left front tire, and he said, man, I need to change that tire. He said, I believe it'll last one more trip. And just three or four days later, he was gone. Preacher, you're depressing me. No, I shouldn't be. Do you feel conviction or you don't? If you're here without the Holy Ghost and you don't feel conviction, wow, that would scare me to death. If you're here and you're cold in the Lord, but you wouldn't really say you backslid, but you're cold in the Lord, and you don't feel anything right now, that would scare me. What worries me today is when people know what they're guilty of and they don't run screaming to an altar of prayer. My God, have mercy. I'm, I'm not trying. I got sense enough to know 
you know that that uh, this is not what we want to hear. Let's love him right now, would you? Come on. I want the music to come and prepare to prepare to sing. God, if you don't do this, it just can't be done. This ain't about my ability, Lord, because I don't have any. I know you said this, Lord, and I'm asking you in Jesus' name, touch the hearts of those that need to be touched tonight. Come on, let's, let's, let's keep talking to the Lord for a few moments. You ain't got time to play games, folks. This ain't no time to be the biggest gambler of all. Taking the risk that you have tomorrow. Taking the risk that there'll always be another service. There'll always be another opportunity. Sometimes the opportunity does not come. Sometimes God just calls your number. And it's over. Come on, let's love him some more, would you? It's okay. You can look me in the eye and tell me I missed it tonight. It's okay. I'll live with it. But I'm not going to go home tonight and roll and toss on a pillow thinking that somebody could be saved tonight. And I didn't do what the Holy Ghost said to do. Hallelujah. My brother, what's your name? Josh. The Holy Ghost dealt with me, Josh. I'm not... But I feel like the Lord, it's just like I see a map in front of you. And the Lord is drawing your attention to a route that he's already established. I don't feel no rebuke in this at all. But I feel like the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you, pay a little closer attention to the route that he's established. Begin to seek him with your whole heart. You're not going to find happiness and peace. I'm, I, as far as I know, I'm talking to somebody full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not making no judgment here. I'm just telling you what I feel the Holy Ghost said. It's time to seek him with your whole heart. There's something in the background that you've wrestled with and fought with for a long time. God said it's time to confront it and kill it. It's time to confront it and get past it. Holy Ghost is talking. Preacher, you missed it. We'll see. Come on, tell me. Tell me it's okay. Tell me it's all right. I mean, it's all right, preacher. You're not bothering me. Go ahead and tell me you don't feel convicted. Go ahead, look the preacher in the eye and tell me you don't feel conviction pulling at you. You're going to do one of two things tonight. You're going to embrace the voices or you're going to embrace conviction. Who says you've got tomorrow? Life is but a vapor. Springeth up and appeareth for a little time. And then, what language? Vanisheth away. You know what it is, sir. You know what it is, ma'am. You're not strange to Pentecost. But God said it's time to make up your mind. God said it's time to seek the Lord while he may be found. It's time to work while it is day, for the night soon cometh when no man can work. Hallelujah. Old-fashioned preaching, yes it is. 
But we don't go according to the program. We follow after the Spirit of the Lord. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Nobody looking around, please. If you're here tonight and the God of heaven has caused you to feel conviction in your heart, I wonder if you'd put your hand up and pull it right back down. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call your name. So I guess, so I guess it's nobody. So let's mark it down for the record. Let's mark it down for the record. The evangelist preached a useless message. No, I know better than that. But somebody needs to come to grips with conviction in your life. Maybe it is for the record. Maybe, maybe it's for those that will hear the voices tomorrow. And you'll remember. I heard that last night. I'm not going to embrace those voices. How about it? I'm fixing to turn this service back to pastor. But I wonder tonight, are you going to take another chance? I'm just going to reach back and get a hold of something that I was raised with. My daddy was a church planner, Bishop. Started several churches in the state of Illinois. And from my earliest recollections of what I remember, every church he ever started over that vestibule door where you went out into the atrium, those little humble churches we had, he had a sign painted up by a professional sign painter. And over every vestibule door of every church he ever pastored, it simply said these words. Will you reject Jesus again? So tonight you won't see the sign, but maybe in your mind. Tonight you'll probably say the preacher, boy, he, he messed up, he missed it. And you can justify yourself any way you please and reason with yourself that you don't have to repent. And you don't have to be baptized in Jesus' name. You don't have to have the Holy Ghost. You can let the enemy whisper in your mind and say, you're just as good as anybody that's here. And that's really not even the point. The point is not who you're as good as. The point is, is have you obeyed the gospel? So you can justify yourself if you want to. You can. But when you walk out these doors tonight, you're going to step over the only barricade between you and hell. I used to take an old Bible and set it in the doorway. And I've watched people literally go to the back entrance of the church and go out the back door to keep from stepping over that Bible. That's good. That's back when folks had the fear of God. Now they just sidle around it, step across it. That's ah, just another antic that the preacher did, just another little old thing he does. And we've justified ourselves into a condition where we're not touched by the power of conviction in our life anymore. The end. Let's love him one more time. Go ahead, sis. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I Come on, let's stand and lift our hands to the Lord. I don't feel like a failure tonight. I know I've obeyed the Lord. I'm the mailman that put the mail in your mailbox. That's it. That's all I am. But you can have deliverance tonight. You can walk out of here full of the Holy Ghost tonight. Yes, you can. 
Yes, you can. Come on, let's find a place to pray. Could we gather around the front? Pastor, would you? Come on, let's step up to the front and make this altar accessible tonight. I don't know if you need to pray or you don't need to pray, but this altar needs to be accessible right now in Jesus' name. Come on, Abundant Life. If you will lead. Why don't you ask somebody beside you if they want to go pray with you? Maybe they would. Maybe it's not a need of conviction on their heart, direction. Let's just pray up front right now. You can have the Holy Ghost tonight. You can walk away from here filled with the power of God. It's a simple thing. It's not complicated. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. And he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. Come on, reach out to him. Talk to him tonight. A step at a time. You believe or you wouldn't be here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's reach out to it.
conscience killer in today's society where we have learned to kill that conscience preacher when he preaches to us and he speaks to us he tells us not to do something or tries to convict us to a place of prayer pricking our hearts and bringing us to an altar it's easier to silence that than it is just let that speak to us And tonight, God has tried to awaken that in us. Give us an understanding. Now, it's not time to silence that. It's time to listen to that still, small voice. In Jesus' name. Sometimes it's easy to get a routine of of listening to all the other voices and shutting God out. It's just easy. We get into a rut, and uh, God has tried to awaken His voice in our life, and I'm thankful that I'll never forget. I'd like to tell you this is years and years ago, but I'll never forget. I was I was driving my father's Lincoln. Some people had offered to ride with me. It was McCormick's Creek. It was a youth rally. Adam Hill had asked me to preach the Section 6 Youth Rally. Brother Kaufman had said something to me, and so I was on my way to preach it. And some young people had even said, hey, we'll ride with you. I said, no, I feel like the Lord told me I need to be alone. And I was on the way down to that youth rally. And I said, Lord, I need you to speak to me. But not about a message or what I'm preaching. I know what you spoke to me. I need you to speak to my heart. and Get me right. At all costs. If there's something in me that I don't see. I want you to show me. And wouldn't you know it. He started showing me something. That I thought wasn't even an issue. But as he began to unveil it, he started really dealing with me. And it was that mirror of a prayer room in a Lincoln Town Car 2004 that I began to weep and cry and tell the Lord how sorry I was. And you know, unfortunately, sometimes repentance doesn't just stop at the altar of Jesus you got to go to your brother or your sister and tell them you're sorry too and I found my way to somebody I said look if I've wronged you in any way I want you to forgive me but I had somehow silenced that voice and 
I didn't even know I did it. But I had silenced it. We got to be careful. Very, very careful. That's why some people don't like to come to an altar anymore. Because it illuminates the darkness. Shows us where we're wrong. Amen. I don't want God to ever stop speaking to me. I grew up with a young man. And uh, he used to sing a song, Far Above All Else. I must be saved. That's the way I feel tonight. Whatever you have to do to me. Don't let me be lost for eternity. I got to be saved. Thank you for coming, visitor. Amen. This week is a very, very packed week. Amen. Sister Hallett, we normally don't do this, but if you'll step to the middle here, and uh, we won't pray for all the drama cast, but we'll pray for you. And uh, God would help you and anoint you. So... uh, Some of you preachers, if you'll help me. Brother Hallett, it'd be only fitting for you. Pray over her, Brother Christ. Amen. Jesus' name. Let's pray right now. Jesus, we love you and we thank you. We ask you to touch right now. Give strength. Give an ability and strength beyond her ability and strength. Show your love to her as she directs and leads our drama. We need help, God. We need people to be able to be touched by your gospel. I'm asking you to touch her that she would be used. She stands in the place of every drama member, drama cast. Help her, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And let your anointing, God In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Tell somebody around you how much you love them and make sure you shake hands with a few visitors. And we'll see you in this place down in the gym Wednesday night, and if you cannot be here all the rest of the week, please make sure you're here Wednesday night for church, and and, uh, we'll see some of you Sunday. You're dismissed.